So we're looking at the disruptive work of the Holy Spirit in June, and it's worth drawing attention to this same kind of disruptive ministry that we see in Jesus. Jesus positions himself within a religious system as a rabbi, teaching in the synagogues, observing the feasts and festivals, teaching from the Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament, but also against the religious system. He offers corrective disruption from within. You think about the kind of followers he chooses, his disciples, not scholars, but tax collectors and fishermen. The kinds of people he dines with, uh, not saintly folk, but sinners. The kind of people uh, and the kind of ministry he engages in. We think about his healing, not in the temple, but in the Galilean countryside on the Sabbath. He constantly is disrupting. And of course, his criticism of the legalistic way of the Pharisees and the religious elite and how they live their lives he, he calls them in, uh, in Matthew uh, whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of dead man's bones and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. So when Jesus comes to Jerusalem, he makes a beeline for the temple. And there in the temple, he disrupts the current religious system in this famous story of him flipping tables. We find it in Mark 11. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple courts and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. And the chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him, for they feared him, because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. We might think of Jesus flipping tables as a kind of burst of, of anger, a tirade, a, a, a tantrum. Uh, or maybe we think of our own table flipping in incidents uh, when we don't get what we want, so like losing at Monopoly or Settlers of Catan and flipping the table so that nobody else can win. Or maybe we think Jesus is saying something about commerce, uh, that religion and money need to be far away from each other. Uh, N.T. Wright, a famous uh, Bible scholar and, and author, says, God is now doing something which is making this system redundant. So Jesus comes as table flipper to disrupt the current religious system and point to the changing of the tides that God is doing something new. Pay attention. And he right continues, he says, turning over the tables of the money changers stopped for a few moments the flow of sacrificial animals which were coming in and being bought. You had to buy the animals there because if you brought a sheep from Galilee, a wolf might nip his ear on the way down and then you'd have to go back and get another one because it wouldn't be pure anymore. He, he later adds, it's not a protest, though, against commercialization. It's a way of symbolically stopping the regular sacrificial system. The temple had become this like center of the action for so long that people couldn't imagine God anywhere but in the temple. They had put God in a box with four walls and a roof and said, hey, if we want to see God, we must go to the temple. Maybe it sounds familiar to our own uh, story and understanding of religion. But in Jesus, God comes as flesh. And later we find out that Jesus is going to build a new temple, uh, which is himself. And it's also us. And Ephesians, Ephesians 2 tells us, uh, offers us this picture of a new temple. He, it says, consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of the household. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. So once again, we are reminded that our tendency is to put God in a box, to hem him in, to keep him from moving, to compartmentalize him. And Jesus comes as a kind of holy disruption, flipping the tables of our hearts because he's doing something new. N.T. Wright uh, adds later on, in Jesus' day, people were looking so hard at the temple that they couldn't see that he was offering the reality to which the temple pointed. Could it be that religion has become for us another way of putting God in a box where we locate God in a building on Sunday mornings and that maybe God is wanting to flip the table of our hearts and break us 
out of that so that we can experience God all throughout the week in our neighborhoods, in our workplaces, in our local parks where we live, work, play, and pray.